Hey guys, Coach Carter here. So we're making a new video about flexibility training. So a lot of this stuff is pretty common, pretty uh, self-explanatory, but I just thought it'd be important, you know, for talking about weightlifting and, and training the high school athlete, obviously flexibility and stretching is a key component to that. So we're going to make a video about the different things we do to make sure our kids are staying healthy and, and, and flexible. So why do we do flexibility training? So number one, injury prevention, right? We want to make sure the kids are properly warmed up. Their body has enough heat to loosen up those muscles to prevent any, any tears or strains uh, while exercising. We want them to uh, obviously, you know, warm up, you know, enough heat, you know, get the muscles warm. And we do that by dynamic stretching. You can also do that by foam rolling before working out. Uh, if you have a hard workout or you have younger kids, you want to get rid of that lactic acid more efficiently. Uh, static stretching and then also using a foam roller can be effective. And then when you are doing flexibility training, you obviously want to increase the range of motion and loosen up the muscles. So static stretching, foam rollers, you, uh, doing hurdle exercises, and then yoga can really help with just making your athletes more flexible, which is going to hopefully reduce the risk of injury. So a lot of videos here. I'm going to go by the, through the stretches pretty fast. Again, how you want to stretch your kids specifically is up to you as the coach. For me, I like to do dynamic stretches before working out. I like that the kids are on their feet. I like that they're moving. When they move, that's going to translate to sport. You know, obviously sitting down and doing static stretches has its benefits, but I want to see the kids up and moving. So I really focus on the major muscle groups of the lower body, and then we throw in a couple dynamic, ballistic lower body movements into the stretch routine, and then we finish with some upper body movements. So uh, quickly, we just uh, like to start with toe touches. So I usually do these stretches from 20 yards, 20 yards in length. Obviously, I'm in a condensed space in the video, but this would be something we do with all the workout classes, specifically, you know, football. But we can I did these with all sports, and they seem to get the job done. So we have little clapping things we do as well. We would tell the kids, one clap, one clap, two claps, two claps, three claps, three claps. And the kids can call it out, and it kind of keeps them on their toes, and they all start walking once somebody claps. So, But for the stretches, reaching across, touching the toe, Going to work out the hamstring. Again, nothing too fascinating there. Our second stretch is going to work out the quads. Pretty standard flamingos. So I want to balance on one leg and opposite arm goes up. And then alternate every step. So balance on one leg, opposite arm goes up. You can have the kids take one step and then I'll unswitch. I let the kids take a couple steps in between as long as they're stretching out that quadricep muscle. Number three, I call it glutes. So this one is going to work out the, the buttocks and, and the glute, glute max and men. For me, I don't like to bring the leg as high as other people for this one. So for me, I like to bring the torso forward so you start feeling that stretch a little bit more. I've seen people that like to bring their knee up, and I feel like that puts way too much stress on the knee. I like to have the, the knee and leg a little lower and actually bend forward until you feel that good stretch. So to me, again, you know, the, the knee, you don't really want to, you know, put in those awkward positions by forcing it up. So... Again, just to kind of show you, I want the kids to move, lean forward until they feel that stretch on the outside of their butt muscle. All right, number four is going to be working out the hip flexors and the groin. So we kind of combine this. You can do this 20 yard of forward lunges and then 20 yards of side lunges. We do 10 and 10 to make it a little faster. So for forward lunge here, again, back the inch off the ground, pushing the hips forward until you feel the stretch in the hip flexor. We're going to do that for each leg. So we're going to alternate for 10 yards. And then once we get to 10 yards, we're going to do side lunges. So for side lunges, again, I want to quickly stretch out each groin. And then I want to pivot on the front foot to make my body swing forward. So you can kind of, I kind of get cut off here, but you can see me kind of pivoting into the camera. So again, forward lunge is going to work the front of the hip, the hip flexor muscles. And then after 10 yards, I'll start pivoting and doing side to side groin lunges. So now we move into some more kind of dynamic movement pattern drills. So we'd have a complete different set of speed drills. We would do arm swings. We would do A skips, B skips. We would do, you know, a dead man's kind of stuff. For our regular dynamic stretch, we do include A skips. So this would be quote unquote a speed drill, but this is kind of something I want the kids to be doing over and over again. So we do do A skips as an everyday stretch. So again, you know, dorsal flexing that toe bringing that foot right back down under the hip. The speed, uh, we can do a whole different speed video with speed drills and running technique, but just generally, you know, some common things you'll see doing, some, the kids doing is they'll have the same arm and say, same leg going up at the same time. It needs to be opposite arm back and then leg up. Okay, so opposite leg and arm 
up. Okay, so that's one common thing you'll see with a lot of young athletes. You want to make sure as one leg goes up, the opposite arm goes forward. You want them to be skipping. You know, you, you, can do, you can do marches, you can do skips, you can do bounds. There's a lot of different things that get them in this pattern, which we'll do. But as a general movement pattern, we'll do a skips every day as a stretching warm-up. And then I like to also have them opening up their hips. So we'll do, I call it can openers, but it's essentially skipping backwards, getting your knees, getting your knee above your hip. So that's the big cue for me. And we're going to get into hurdle exercises, which is specifically targeting the hip. But looser hips means less incidence of lower body extremity injury. So we want to really get keep those hips loose. And again, I like the, I like the, the bouncing and the skipping aspect of this. You know, the more the kids can work at amortization of the, of the feet, that's going to hopefully transition to them running faster on the field. So, uh, again, for can openers, the big key is getting the knee above the hip as they skip backwards. You know, the torso is facing forward. You don't really want them turning the torso in this drill. So for number seven, okay, so this is now a little more ballistic. So I, I went to a modern-day football game a couple years ago, and I was, I was stunned to see all the jumping they did as their warm-up. They're doing plyo jumps to sprint. They're doing, you know, push-ups to sprint. I mean, they're doing – that That was their whole – Pre-game warm-up was plyometric. So I, I took a little bit of that and, and sprinkled it in. I, I don't know how they get away with not stretching. I guess that's something I need to read up on. But for me, I like to do three pogo jumps, and then the kids sprint for 10, and then glide for 10. So in the video, you'll see me going one, two, three, sprinting out. Okay, so I should probably add this here for pogo, pogo to sprint. So it's sprint 10, and then it's glide 10 for a total of 20 yards. Again, when they're doing the pogo jumps, I want them to get their feet off the ground as fast as possible. The height, I'm not so much concerned about. I want them to leave the ground, but I don't want them sitting on the ground. I want them up as fast as possible, and obviously I want them to explode into a sprint. <clears throat> and again, there, there's dozens of speed drills we'll do and, and kind of get to get them specifically faster, but in terms of our regular warm-up, I like to incorporate this. And then we're going to end with arm swings, so pretty pretty simple here. They're walking and swinging their arms and twisting their torso, just getting their upper body extremities loose. They can loosen up the neck, that kind of stuff. So, you know, I, I've played around with a lot of different ways of doing this. I think for me, this is the most efficient. If you're like pre-sport, you might want to throw in some static stretching to kind of get them even looser. But really for weightlifting classes and weightlifting sessions, to me, these lifts get all those muscles warmed up. Okay, so if we're going to move into our static routine here, so static traditionally, you know, for me is more, more done after a workout. We won't do it every day, but if I, the kids had a really hard workout, we'll throw in some static stretching to loosen up the muscles, get rid of the lactic acid, increase flexibility. This usually isn't done every day for me. Uh, I think, you know, again, it, it could help. I mean, it, it, there, there's a purpose for it, but I know in the old days, it used to be all static stretching. We've kind of gotten to that dynamic stretching routine. I think as strength and conditioning has kind of developed over the decades, if you will, but I still see a use for static stretching. So again, there's lots of ones you can do, lots of different variations, but the ones we focus on, again, side lunges. Traditionally, we'll hold these stretches anywhere between 10 to 12, 14 seconds. Again, for this one, I'm just hitting the groin. I want to push in either direction until I feel a good, good, nice pull in the groin area. Number two, this one has some uh, applicability to our power movements. So we like to do sumo squats. The big key here is the kids keeping their heels on the ground. You'll see a lot of kids, their heels go up. They won't be able to go as low as they can, but we want them to go as low as they can with the big chest. Their elbows are inside their knees and they're pushing out to feel the groin really start stretching. So this one might take some more time for the kids to get used to, but this is definitely one that I like to get the kids in to kind of work those hips and work the, the, the front squat and back squat movement the end movement. Moving into some more hamstring type work, so static uh, sit and reaches. So again, reach, touch your toes, no bouncing, pretty, pretty standard. If you want to have the kids spread out and then put both hands to one leg, you can have them reach in the middle. Again, this is, you know, put a lot of strain on the hamstring. If you hold it for, you know, 10 to 14 seconds, you'll really start getting that pull in the muscle and hopefully increase that flexibility over time. The biggest thing is you don't want the kids to bounce. That's kind of you know, number one with, with that sit and reach exercise. If you do, if you are working out PE kids and PE classes, that's a good exercise to incorporate since the sit and reach is an actual uh, California state fitness standard. I'm sure it's a standard in other states as well. So that's something you can kind of think about if you're doing more PE teaching. 
So now the rest of them are kind of combination stretches. So we'll do kind of two different stretches into one. So I call this one Hollywoods. So you are throwing, let's just say, your right leg over your left and then twisting. So you're going to feel it all in your torso really nice. You know, you feel, you'll feel a nice flexible stretch there. You want to make sure you're holding it for probably about 10 seconds. And then I'll just tell the kids up and they'll bring their left leg up and then they end up stretching their glute. Okay, so this is Hollywoods up, switch, Hollywoods up. So it's torso to glute stretch. And again, this is, you know, I've heard it called pretzels. I, I In California, I think Hollywood's a little more applicable, but, you know, again, this is pretty common stuff here. Next one is another another good one. The, the word I got caught using is hurdler stretch. So first one is one leg back, one leg in front bent, and you're just going to lean over that front leg, and you're going to feel it all on the inside of your groin area for the leg that's forward. So you'll see me kind of twisting up to my knee, my torso, kind of see my twisting there. That is just going to work a different part of your groin. So as the kids get used to the stretch, they'll they'll find the right pattern for them. And then if we say back, the kids now just lean back and now they're stretching out their quad. So again, kind of kill two birds with one stone. They don't have to change positions. Forward, back, stretching groin, stretching quad. And I'll just play the video here. Again, hurdler stretch, leaning forward, real nice stretch in the upper groin area, and then leaning back, now stretching the hamstring. And if you switched it, same principle, leaning forward, leaning back. And then finally, we would end with, I call this leg pull in. So this is a nice hamstring stretch. So the kids will lay on their back. And they'll just bring their leg into their chest. And they should feel it all through their hamstring, all through their glute. If they don't feel it, they need to pull harder or maybe pull their leg kind of up or down on their chest. They'll definitely feel that pull. And then the combination we add in here is just over, which is now going to work the torso. The big key for this one is the kids want to keep their shoulder blades on the ground as they flip. So they want to keep the, the – if the shoulder blades lift, it's going to be taking away the stretch out of the torso. So – Again, this is a nice relaxing one for the kids to end a workout on. Uh, really get a nice pull in the hamstring and then throw it over to get a nice pull in the torso. And again, shoulder blades stay on the ground, trying to get that foot all the way across. Again, I see some really cool stuff with, you know, doing type, you know, scorpion type activities when you're kind of rolling. For me, I don't really overdo it. You know, with the stretching in terms of like the technicalities, I just want to get the major muscles stretched. Obviously, you can throw in calves and upper body stretches. And like I mentioned scorpions before, but for me, this is kind of the, the bread and butter. So now moving into hurdle exercises. Okay, so this is something I picked up a few years ago as an athletic PE strength coach working with all sports. You know, hurdle exercises are great to loosen up the hips. And there's lots of variations. Again, there it looks like there's six here, but there's really only three major ones. Let me um, back this up. So you see straight over, lead left, lead right. So video is a little funny here, but let me um, let me pull it up for you. Okay, so you can use anywhere between six to eight hurdles. You can't really tell in the video, but they're kind of right next to each other. The, the height of them is just based on what your athletes can do. You know, usually 32 inches, 36 inches is fine. But you, if, you're, if your athletes are struggling to get over them, that's no good. So the cues for the hurdles, the, the first one is if I'm leading right foot, trailing left, I want the foot to go over the hurdle. Okay. You see my foot here going over. If the foot doesn't go over, if it goes what you'll see commonly, the foot goes around. Well, now I'm not working out the hip as effectively as I want to be. Okay. You can see here the knee is high above the hip, we're really loosening up those psoas muscles as we complete this exercise. Okay, another big cue is you want to keep your chest forward as much as possible. So as the kids go over, you don't want to see them twist in the chest, right? That's compensating for their lack of, for their lack of flexibility in the hip. So you want to really make sure they are keeping that chest forward. So now you always want to lead with the opposite leg for the second time through. So now I believe I'm going to lead with my left foot. So lead left, again, foot over hurdle, Trail right, foot over hurdle, chest forward. So, again, I'm only demonstrating on three hurdles, but you could use anywhere between six to eight. And you'll uh, your kids will really feel the stretches as they go through these. Okay, the second core hurdle exercise we do is just backwards now. So this is going to be a lot harder for your kids. If you have a beginning group, 
Make sure to space them out effectively. If you have one after another and then one falls or trips, they're going to all get squished together. So I tell them at least one full hurdle apart before the next person goes. But same principle, foot over hurdle and then trail. Foot over hurdle and then trail. So you want both feet to go over each hurdle. And then we lead right. Now for the second time through, we're going to lead left. And again, the biggest cues, no, number one cue by far is get your foot over the hurdle. I tell them, get your foot over the white and then keeping the chest as square as possible. This one's going to be a little harder to keep square because it's a lot harder of a movement for the kids that complete. But again, this is another one to increase the flexibility of the hip. And then the third primary one we do is, I call it rockets, kind of like the Vegas or dancers. They throw their legs up. So this one, you're going to try to keep your legs as straight as possible. The big cue for this one is your inside foot has to move first. First big cue, inside foot goes first and both feet over each hurdle. So if you play the video, inside foot first. Okay, so again, for this one, my right foot is the inside foot in relation to the hurdle. So right, left, right, left, right, left. And I know, you know, I'm kind of I've done this many times, but this will be really confusing for your kids to get. Either they won't keep their legs straight, they won't feel the rhythm of the, of the bouncing, or they'll go one foot per hurdle. You want both feet over each hurdle. So again, let's start from the beginning. So again, keeping that leg as straight as possible, working out that glute, working out that hamstring. And again, the dynamic bouncing is also something that you know, the kids will have to get used to. So you can either have them go straight back down or you can have them loop around the opposite direction. If you, want to, if you have like 50 kids going at once, you would have probably groups of six to eight hurdles lined up. You could have them start on this side and loop around to the other side. And then obviously you want to have them lead with both legs leading first. So that's another good one. Some other variations I don't have filmed. You could go over three backwards one, over three forward backwards one. You can go over under. You could do bent leg over. So these are the main three I like to get done. But again, I'm sure if you guys go on YouTube, there's lots of different variations. So uh, finishing up here, some other things we like to do are foam rollers. Again, uh, the fascia, once the fascia gets tight, the foam rollers can loosen it up and really make the kids' muscles feel good. Some love them, some really aren't big fans, but I think it's great if the kids like them, have them available either before or after. I think they're great for loosening up the muscles before exercise, and then afterwards, if you go nice and soft on those tight muscles, it will kind of move that lactic acid around. I don't have videos, but I do have a, a workout program. I got this online, XL Athlete, but you can kind of just see, get a little bigger. You know, it just shows the video, it just shows an image. So you would want to, again, roll out the major muscles they say 20 to 30 seconds continuously. I just let the kids kind of roll out the muscle until they feel like it's, it's warm. But again, glutes, hamstrings, calves, IT bands, a good one that can get really tight on runners. And if you went up here, you could do it on the quads. They also have upper body ones for the back, for the lats, for the uh, obliques. So again, there's a lot of different literature and, and videos on, on foam rollers. And then to finish up, yoga Pilates. So I think it was it was Stanford that got made this real popular doing it with their with their football players, lower body extremity injuries, I guess, went down afterwards. To me, I think it's good in the offseason to, to throw in there. We're not doing yoga four times a week or anything like that at the high school level, but I do think you will increase flexibility. The kids will like it. It's, it's something different. Same with Pilates. There's some small variations to, to both of those movements, but I think if you are looking for kind of an increase in flexibility, and again, hopefully a lower, high, lower risk of lower extremity injury, then yoga could be something you do for your kids in a group setting. I know on Hard Knocks, they had a big Ram, Ram, uh, this is when Jeff Fisher was there, a little yoga session. So quickly for programming, so dynamic stretching is almost always done before we compete in the weight room or on the field. We'll do static stretching after kids compete on their own, generally. Uh, after kids compete, or, the, or they can do it on their own if we prompt them to. Hurdle exercises are usually done in the off season or around competition. I know some teams like to utilize them before working out for me or before games. I think it's more beneficial around competitions. Again, foam rollers you can do before or after, usually in the weight room, but I've seen programs take them onto the field and do that too. So whatever you're comfortable with. And then yoga Pilates traditionally done in the off season from my experience. So again, lots of good stuff here. I think at the high school level, obviously dynamic stretching is, is definitely number one. You can move into static stretching. If you have a little more time with your kids, hurdles can be really effective. And then rollers and yoga can also really, really make gains in terms of flexibility. So uh, thanks for watching, guys.